Does adding fat to your coffee actually help you burn fat? Does it actually enhance the effects of your coffee? I mean, sure, we know that keto coffee or bulletproof coffee tastes amazing, right? We know that that tastes good. But is it actually doing something? Is it actually helping you burn fat? Well, believe it or not, yeah, it does help you burn fat. I'm going to explain it because it's a two-part equation here. The first part has to do with the actual caffeine absorption, and the second part, believe it or not, has to do with how coffee affects your gut bacteria and how fat affects your gut bacteria in terms of making it more of a fat-burning machine. Yep, so you're gonna wanna hear me out on this. It gets a little bit involved, but trust me, I'll make some sense of it as I always do. Remember, you are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channels. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of videos throughout the rest of the week as well, just because I like to throw lots of content out there. So let's talk about this for a second. The first thing we wanna look at is caffeine absorption, okay? If we can control the absorption of caffeine and make it a little bit more even keeled, we're gonna have less of a spike and less of a crash, okay? So one of the simple reasons why you feel so good when you have keto coffee is simply because you're having a little bit more of a sustained release of that caffeine. You're having like a 30% elevation versus just like a 100% elevation, and it's like nice and controlled. You see, what's interesting is it's been hypothesized that when you actually blend coffee, like literally blend coffee with a fat, like blend it in a magic bullet, you whip up the fat so much that you help encourage the breakdown of the fat into what are called micelles. Now, this isn't scientifically backed with any data, so forgive me if it's a little bit kind of stretching it, but it does make some sense. Okay, so when you break down the fat, you make it so it absorbs a little bit better. That could make some sense, but what really makes sense is adding the fat along with the coffee or the caffeine. One thing that we do know for sure is that fat digests relatively slowly. So if we're digesting fat slow and we have caffeine in the mix, we're gonna absorb that caffeine at a nice slow rate too. But if we do actually have that hypothesized improvement in fat digestion because it's been sort of whipped up, then we also get a nice slower delivery, but an effective delivery. Makes sense. That's why we feel nice and even and we don't crash as much. There was actually a study that was published in Z Gastroenterol that found that caffeine legitimately absorbed its fastest when it was in a pure liquid form and it absorbed slower when it was attached to any food. So the slower the digestion of the food, the slower the absorption of the caffeine. Maybe not ideal if you're looking for like an instant pre-workout the second you walk into the gym, but certainly good if you're looking for a nice even bout of energy. Okay, now let's get into the crazy cool stuff. This is the stuff that nobody's talking about when it comes down to keto coffee, so I'm happy to bring it to light. See, inside our gut, we have four different general classifications of bacteria. Obviously, we have thousands upon millions, actually, of different kinds of bacteria, but four general classifications. We have Firmicutes bacteria, we have Actinobacteria, we have Proteobacteria, and then we have what are called Bacteroidetes. The ones that we're gonna focus on are the Firmicutes and the Bacteroidetes. Okay, these are very, very important. The reason that they're so important is they play a role with something known as fasting-induced adipose factor. Okay, literally, what that fasting-induced adipose factor does is encourage fat burning or fat storage starting from the gut biome level. Okay, so what has been found is that firmicutes is associated with more obese and overweight individuals. It is fed by starches, it's fed by sugar. And then we have bacteroidetes, which is fed by fats. And bacteroidetes is associated with leaner people, leaner bodies. In fact, there was a study that took a look at obese and lean twins. So one twin was obese, one twin was lean. So genetic setup was the same. They found that the obese individuals had high levels of firmicutes, and the lean individuals had higher levels of bacteroidetes. Very, very powerful right there. Now, why that matters is the association with that fasting-induced adipose factor that I talked about. So high levels of the bad kind of bacteria that we don't want, the firmicutes, are associated with lower levels of fasting-induced adipose factor. Fasting-induced adipose factor is important to have in our bodies because it blocks something known as lipoprotein lipase, which would normally encourage the shuttling and the storage of fat. So if we have low levels of FIAF, fasting-induced adipose factor, then we have more ability to store fat. So Firmicutes bacteria is associated with low levels of FIAF, which means more fat. Okay, then bacteroidetes, which is associated with consuming more fat, is correlated with high levels of FIAF, 
which means less stored body fat. So we have a direct correlation there. Now, here's where it gets really interesting, though. Normally, you can't naturally skew your body's ability to have more bacteroidetes. There aren't enough probiotics in the world to be able to consume and change your gut bacteria that simply. You need to have an environment where they can actually thrive. So step one, of course, is cutting out the sugar and the starches so that the Firmicutes, bad bacteria, dies, and then it allows the Bacteroidetes bacteria to slowly start to climb up. But you can improve it by consuming a lot of fats, but you can improve it even more by adding coffee, because coffee has the polyphenols that create sort of a prebiotic environment. Prebiotics are fertilizer for the gut bacteria. So if we have the Bacteroidetes that's starting to climb up because we're adding more fats in, and then we add coffee into the mix, we have the polyphenols that support the environment for the Bacteroidetes to grow exponentially and therefore improve FIAF and reduce fat accumulation and improve fat burning. This is why keto coffee is so powerful. So yeah, you definitely should be consuming keto coffee. Now it's not always practical to make keto coffee and that's why my friends over at Perfect Keto actually came up with a packaged keto coffee literally taking your MCTs, taking your fats, and taking your coffee and putting it into a true powdered form that you can bring with you anywhere. This stuff has saved me multiple, multiple times when I'm traveling. If I'm flying out to go film somewhere, I bring these things with me because honestly, it's a perfect breakfast replacement for me. I still need some energy, I still need my fats, but I'm also supporting the Bacteroidetes and actually allowing my gut bacteria to do what it needs to do. So huge thank you to Perfect Keto for extending every single one of my viewers and my fans a special 30% off discount down in the description below. So not only are you getting some knowledge, you're getting a good price break so you don't have to be buying a bunch of ghee, don't have to be buying a bunch of coconut oil, and you don't have to bring your Magic Bullet blender with you whenever you travel. So a huge thank you to them for making that possible. Now lastly, when it comes down to making keto coffee, one of the biggest benefits that you're going to get is just the satiation. Okay, let's not forget that. Like I mentioned, I consume that stuff for breakfast. So keto coffee is a great way to introduce yourself to fasting. Maybe you're not intermittent fasting yet, you're just doing keto. But I promise you, if you start implementing some form of keto coffee, you will find that it's easier and easier to break away from having breakfast. So keto or not, utilizing keto coffee is very, very powerful. At the very least, at least do it for your gut bacteria so you can improve those Bacteroidetes levels and get rid of those Firmicutes levels so you get more of that adipose factor that you need to burn the fat you want to burn. I'll see you in the next video.